Welcome to the course Introduction to Algorithm. My name is Shoro Mukhobadhyay. I am a faculty member at IIT Kharagpur. I am lecturing this course. In this lecture, we will cover two topics, uh, namely computational geometry and dynamic programming or DP. So, first part of the lecture will be on computational geometry, which is a neat field for uh, to solve the geometric problem. And the second part of this lecture, we will we'll discuss the uh, algorithmic technique, a new algorithmic technique, which is called dynamic programming technique or DP technique. So, let us start the uh, first part of this lecture. So, in the first part, we will discuss computational geometry. So, computational geometry is a neat field for uh, geometric problem. So, in this, uh, so we start with the what do you mean by geometric uh, objects fundamental objects and then what are the problems we can think of. So, any geometric problem uh, comes under this area what is called computational geometry. Okay. So, uh, it is basically to solve the uh, algorithm for this is the this is computational geometry is the algorithms to solve the geometric problem. It is a neat field for uh, solving the geometric problem in 1D, 2D or higher dimensional. So, let us start with the what do you mean by uh, what are the geo fundamental geometric objects are. So, uh, the first object is point, it could be uh, 1D, 2D or any dimensional. If it is 2D, then each point is associated with the two dimensional x, y coordinate. If it is 3D, x, y, z. If it is 1D, just a point on the real line. So, this point could be any dimensional. So, theoretically it could be d dimensional and then the uh, another object is maybe the line segment. So, we know the start point end point of a line. So, this is the line segment and this is also in any dimensional we can think of and then the line, line means whose uh, the start and end points are not given. So, this is a line. Okay. So, uh, so uh, what are the problems we can have in this, uh, so given these objects given this geometric object, we can ask to uh, solve some geometric problem. Like for example, suppose we have given this point set, we have given point set, it could be uh, in any dimension 2D, 3D. So, suppose these are uh, these are the points which are input. Now, we may uh, we may ask for a polygon, we may have to uh, cover these uh, points by a region uh, polygon. Okay. Or, or another problem could be triangulation. We may need to form a triangle, uh, the minimum number of triangle based on this point, so that we can cover all the points. That this is called triangulation problem. So, this is this is a geometric problem. So, we need to find an algorithm to solve this problem. We 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 want to uh, uh, we want to do the triangulation of all the points. So, or convex hull given the points we need to find the region which is a convex region. So, every point must be, so minimum uh, minimum area we should cover so that it is a convex set like every point if you take the whole uh, whole lines is inside the region. So, that is called convex set, convex hull. So, these are the, uh, these are the many uh, geometric basic uh, structure we can think of. So, uh, depending on the application we may need to uh, uh, find the uh, problems and we may need to solve this problem uh, by giving by providing the algorithms and those will come under this uh, area umbrella what is called computational geometry. Okay. In this lecture, we will cover one problem which is called orthogonal range search problem. So, what is the problem? Problem is we have a n points which is the input, it could be any dimension 2D, 3D, uh, 4, uh, 4D, ND or 1D. Uh, so, uh, and so this could be a say n records, each record suppose you have a database of n records, each record is associated with some attributes or some field we have seen say student record, each student had roll number, name, CGPA, SGPA. So, if you want only deal with the numbers then you can have the marks in different different subjects or CGPA, SGPA marks in algorithm course. So, each record is associated with some numbers say D numbers. So, we need to maintain uh, we are maintaining n records 
uh, and each record is a point and this point is d dimensional point you can say. So, d could be depending on our application d could be uh, 1, 2, 3 anything. Now, these points are given for example, this is 2D points are given. Now, what is the uh, orthogonal range search query? So, we have given a uh, given a orthogonal line uh, to x axis and y axis basically we have given this uh, rectangle 2D suppose these points are in 2D. So, we have given this rectangle and this lines parallel to the axis. Now, this is also a part of the input and we need to find out uh, are there any points in this region. So, this is a search problem orthogonal range search. So, this this region is orthogonal to the uh, axis. So, we have given a region rectangle in 2D. Now, we need to search uh, we need to do this query like uh, are there any points in this region or if there are how many points. So, these are the queries we can think of how many points are there in this region. So, if the answer is yes then how many points are there in the region then uh, then we, we, we will ask to list the points I mean the output the points which are in this region. So, there are, we can think some application of this problem like uh, suppose for student records student has some marks in algorithm that is one field and CGPA is another field and student uh, uh, maybe uh, other fields are there. Now, suppose a placement for a campusing interview a company came and company asking for a uh, do the search for 2D say, say algorithm marks and CGPA. So, company want to search the student whose algorithm marks is between say 70 to 90 the range and and also the uh, CGPA is uh, and, uh, uh, 8 to 9 CGPA. So, those student we want to report or there could be another uh, another application in the in the uh, field of some uh, say we, we, we are in a city where there are many restaurants in the city. So, every restaurant has some uh, attributes the location and the taste of food. So, we can do the search there. So, there are there you, you, you can think of some more applications in this area, but the idea is we have given these points and we have given a uh, orthogonal range here in this case it is a rectangle parallel to the axis and we have to find the points in this rectangle. Now, if it is 3D it will be a box if it is 3D then what we have we have this uh, 3 that this is x axis y axis we can have a z axis then this could be a box over here we, we may have a box over here. So, this could be a box over here and the query is how many uh, how, how many points are there in this uh, orthogonal range. So, this is another. So, it, it we, we can extend this for many dimensional depending on our problem. So, database depending on our database. Okay. So, uh, now the question is we want to uh, have a data structure so that we can solve this problem uh, we can do this query in a faster way. So, we have we are looking for a data structure for this uh, set of points. So, primarily we will look for a static data structure primarily we are not allowing addition or deletion in this set. So, we have given n records and we need to do this searching range search. So, that is a static data structure primarily we can look for. But in one day we will see later stage we can make it a dynamic also uh, by supporting insert and delete. So, we, we, we can insert some points we can delete some points from there. Okay. Now, how to how to do this how to solve this problem. So, let us just think about 1 D in a 1 D the points are like this we have given some points and the uh, for the uh, orthogonal uh, range means we have a intervals say x 1 y 1 uh, x 1 x 2. So, we have only one dimensional. So, x 1 y 1 uh, sorry x 1 x 2 points x intervals. So, we have a uh, close intervals and we have some points over there and we need to uh, search is there any points in this region how many points are there. So, those queries we need to do. Now, how to do it? We have seen in the last lecture the interval trees. 
So, we can think for this points as the interval trees. How? Because these points are x, so we can just have a x comma x, the close interval with having only one points and then we can have we, we have the given interval x 1 x 2, then we can do the uh, interval search like we did in the last lecture. We can have a uh, we, we want to report all the intervals which are overlapping with these intervals. So, that we have seen we can use the red black tree with some proper augmentation there and then uh, we have seen that that to report all the k points output all the k points we, we need this many this is the time complexity, but we want to do it in k plus log n time. So, what are the other way we can do? We can sort it. So, that is the another solutions another idea we can sort the points and store them in the array. So, we just basically use the array we sort the points and we store them in the array. So, we have given the query intervals x 1 x 2. So, what we do? We do the binary search on uh, on this sorted points with x 1 and then we do the again binary uh, search with x 2 then we, we got the uh, where x 1 x 2 is then we can output all the points uh, which are between x 1 and x 2. So, that will take uh, k plus because log n is the time to do the binary search. So, two times we are doing order of log n and k is the number of points. If there are k number of points in that interval, we will report that we will just uh, scan that points those points and but here there are p processing time to sort the points. So, that will take a log n time we know the sorting uh, if we can use heap sort or mar sort for getting the a log n. But this cannot this idea this sorting idea will, uh, cannot be extended for more I mean two dimensional in the two dimension then we will sort the point with respect to which coordinate x or y. So, there it is not so straightforward to extend this. So, we are looking for a data structure which we can extend easily for any dimension. So, we start with a 1 D uh, range search tree that is called range search tree. So, we will have a new data structure which is called 1 D range searching range search tree then we can. Uh, so, this is the uh, this is the so we we want to have a uh, dynamic structure that can list uh, in the this same time k plus log n time. So, basically uh, we are looking for a uh, so we are looking for a balance binary search tree. So, but here we are going to store the uh, the points in the leaps. So, th this is kind of new structure we are thinking new organization principle we are doing now. Uh, so, so far we store the points in the tree. So, here we are storing all the points in the leaps of the tree. So, this is called range 1 D range search tree we will we'll slowly uh, go to the details of this tree. Now, we want to make it a uh, balanced binary search tree. So, this is a binary search tree. So, we want to uh, we want to do the internal node uh, such that the, the binary search property will be satisfied that, that means, uh, given any node x all the all the nodes in the left sub tree must be less than x all the nodes in the right sub tree must be greater than x. So, that is the binary search property. So, we will have some points in the binary uh, in the intermediate node which will satisfy this property. So, what we are going to store there we will slowly discuss that. So, basically we will store the maximum of the uh, we will store the x the key value the node in uh, internal node we will store the maximum key of any leaf in the subtree rooted at x. So, that we will see let us take an example suppose these are our points in one day and we need to do the search. So, what is 1D range search tree? We put, we put this in a leaf in such a way that it will be a, a balanced tree. Okay. So, suppose this is one example. So, these are the points and we are this is the sorted order. So, we are putting them in a uh, leaves then we form the tree. So, now this 1, 6 these are the points this we put it in the leaf. Now, these are the inter, uh, intermediate nodes or internal node we are forming this way these two we are having an internal node like this. So, that we are, we, we are organizing this tree in such a way this will be balanced 
Okay, and this is a sorted order because we know that if you do the in order traversal, it will give a sorted. Now, what we are going to put in this uh, nodes, in this internal nodes. So, we want to make a this node to be a uh, uh, this this tree to be a search tree. So, we want to uh, put this so that that is why we are taking the sorted one. We want to uh, put this uh, this node to be the uh, maximum. Uh, maximum leaves value in the left subtree. So, the, if you consider this node, this is the left subtree, this is 6. So, you are going to put 6 over here. Now, this is 1 because this is the left subtree, maximum is 1, we are going to put here. Now, consider this node. Now, this is the left subtree, what is the maximum leaf value? 8. So, we are going to put 8 over here. Similarly, these two, this is the, uh, this is the node and this is the left subtree and maximum leaf value is uh, 12, we, we are going to put 12. Similarly, this node, we consider this. Now, 14 is the, uh, if we consider this uh, left subtree, 14 is the leaf, the original points basically. The, so, 14 we are going to store there. Okay. So, now consider this node. So, this is the, this should be the, this, uh, what, what is the value you store here? The value will be the, the uh, leaves maximum maximum leaves, maximum points basically in the left subtree rooted at this. So, in the left subtree, this is the left subtree. So, 17 is the maximum leaf, we store 17 over there. So, similarly here also we will do the same thing. Okay. So, this is the, uh, this is what is called 1D rain search tree. So, this we will we'll, we'll, we'll make this tree as a uh, p processing. Okay. Now, once we have this tree, then how we will do the search? So, this is the property we want for the uh, binary uh, search tree and we can see this is preserved and this is also a balanced binary search tree. Okay. Now, suppose we want searching 7 uh, range search, we are doing the range search 7 comma 14. So, we want to, uh, we want to output all the points which are in the range 7 comma uh, 41 sorry. So, now what to do these are the points these are the points. So, 7 is here. So, these are the points which are between 7 comma 41. So, we want to output this. So, to output this instead of outputting each point what we can do? We can output the uh, 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 subtree rooted at this. So, we can output uh, the 8 as a subtree and we can say take all the leaps or report all the leaps which is uh, rooted which is uh, which is in the subtree rooted at 8. Similarly, we report the 14 and we, we say uh, take all the leaves in the subtree rooted at 14. So, that is basically 12, 14, 17 and then we again say uh, 26. So, then we, so basically we are going to report output all this subtree subtree rooted at 8, subtree rooted at 14, subtree rooted at 26, subtree rooted at 41 and we, we will say that you just take all the points, all the leaps rooted at that subtree. So, this way we will do because this way it will easier to uh, do this uh, search query in a minute we will see that. So, these are the uh, tree we are outputting basically and we are asking the take the all the leaps in from that tree. Okay. So, now this, this way we can do the query. So, this is the general uh, idea of the 1D search query. So, we have given the search tree. What we do? We start with root. We have given the interval x1 and x2. We start with root and then we will either we will go to the left or right depending on the value of x1, x2. If x1, x2 is completely this side, we have to go to the left. Otherwise, you have to go to the right. So, this way we will come. So, we will continue like this until we reach to a node where there will be something interesting in the left and there will be something interesting in the right. So, there will be some points which are in the left and there will be some point which are in the right also. So, this node is called the split node. So, we continue traveling this way until we reach to a split node. So, this here we start with root if, if x 2 is uh, if x 2 is less than this then uh, then we will go to the left, if other again we may have to go to the right, left, right, left, right in this way, 
ultimately we will reach to a node where there will be something in the left subtree which are interesting interesting means which are in the range and there will be some points in the right subtree also in that for, uh, from the uh, on the right subtree of that node which are intra which are in the in the in the interval so this node is called split node so from split node what we do we have to traverse for left and right both let us consider the left traversal we will traverse left now if we have to traverse right the uh, sorry the left again then everything is interesting in the right so we'll just output this subtree rooted at this node so we'll output whole this tree so all the leaves are here in that range then again we traverse if i are going to right we keep on go right right then when we are going to left then all the right subtree is interesting so that we have to output so similarly here we go to the right then we go left once we go to the right over here then in the left subtree uh, all the all the uh, all the um, uh, leaves will be in that range so we have to output this subtree rooted at this node similarly if we go again right we have to output this again right we have to output so these are the subtree we are outputting by this uh, algorithm which is called uh, one d range search query so let us have the algorithm uh, pseudo code so we start with the uh, we have already have the uh, already have the tree one d range search tree now we have this points x1 x2 that is the interval now we start with the root and we 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 want to go to the split node so how to go to the split node so we keep on travels until we reach to the split node until or until w is a leave node it may happen w is a leave node then we check the value of key value of w with x1 x2 and we report otherwise otherwise if these two if x2 is less than key of w that, that that means we have to go to the left completely or if key of w is less than x1 that means x this interval is this side so nothing because key of w means what key of w is in means maximum this this point this key value is key of w i uh, sorry key of w that is the maximum uh, maximum uh, points in the leaves containing in the left subtree so if the maximum point is less than the k x1 which is the uh, our interval is x1 x2 if the maximum point is less than x1 then there is no question of going to the left then we will go to the uh, right so that is the thing so if x2 is uh, less than key we will go to the left otherwise if x1 is uh, greater than this then we will go to the uh, right right so this way we continue uh, this is a while loop we will continue until we go to the split node so this is the split node so from the split node now we have to go for we know uh, after this node there is something interesting in the both the part left and right so we have to get all this uh, all this subtrees so how to do that we will do the traversal left and right in this uh, slide we will see only one left traversal and right traversal will be similar so this is the left traversal so we are here now we are at the split node now we check if w is a leaf if w is a leaf we check whether uh, it is in the uh, range then we output it otherwise we will keep on traversal so we take this uh, value the left and if this x1 is less than key value then we have to go to the left further once we going to the left then everybody is interesting in the right subtree so we will output this right subtree rooted at this point because every leaves will be here in that range once we go to the left okay and then we keep on doing if i going to right right once we go to left again then everybody will be here interesting every every leaves in this uh, left subtree uh, uh, sorry right subtree will be in the range so we output that so this way we will go continue until we reach to a leaf one will reach to a leaf we check that range and if it is then we will we'll read we will output the leaf node and this we will similarly we will go for the right part of this tree so that code uh, is not here so similar thing uh, when we just traverse so when we go to the right then all the all the left subtree we have to output so we, we will output the tree subtree rooted at this node and we take all the points over here 
So, this is the algorithm, this is the pseudo code. Now, we talk about the, we analyze this code, time complexity, space complexity and this. Okay, now let us analyze this 1D range search query. So, now the question is how many subtrees will be there? Log n subtrees are there. Now, uh, how to find this subtree? Because we are just traversing, we are just starting from the root and going to the uh, height of the tree. So, that time is log n because this is a uh, balanced binary search tree we, we, are, we, we have found. Okay. Now, uh, now, the question is can we uh, can, can test for points in the interval? Uh, this is this, this this can test the points in the interval in log n time. Okay. Now, how to get how many points are there? So, for that we can do some little more augmentation in the data structure in the way that in each each node we can store the subtree size because we are outputting this if we store the subtree size in each node that is a new field data structure augmentation we are doing then that can give us the uh, how many points are there. So, that augmentation we can easily uh, do, we have, do, we have done in the previous lecture like this. So, that augmentation we can easily do. Now, once we get this, uh, get this subtrees, then uh, how many subtrees are there? Log n subtrees and each subtree can be found in log n time, that is basically uh, just to traverse from root to the leaf, uh, that is the way we are doing. Now, if there are k points over there, we have to output these k points and that will take order of k plus log n time. So, this is the time complexity for uh, reporting all the k points, first k points in the intervals. Now, space is log n because there are n points over there and p processing time is l log n to form the tree. We, we have a sorted one and then we form the tree. So, that is the p processing time. Now, the con now how we can, so the, this is the 1D range search tree. Now, how we can extend this 1D range search to 2D? So, the idea is uh, very much uh, uh, yes, uh, very much uh, powerful that we can extend it not only for 2D, we can extend it for 3D, 4D, higher D. So, what we do? We have a primary 1D range search tree based on the x coordinate, okay. then we form the tree and then we, we, we do the searching, we, this is the uh, x uh, primary 1D range search tree based on the x, x coordinate value. Now, here points are x comma y, x coordinate y coordinate, but based on the x coordinate value we form this tree. Now, we have a query, uh, query is now uh, red triangle x 1 y 1, uh, x 1 yeah x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2. So, we first do the query on x 1 x 2. So, that will give us uh, this is x 1 this is x 2. So, that will give us all the points, these are the points which are in this in this region. Okay. So, this is the whole region in the strip. So, this is a strip, this is a strip. So, we just if we do the 1D range search, then it will give us all the points which are satisfying x1 and between x1 and x2. Okay. And this will be from this, these are the points. Now, we have to again we uh, we, we for all the points we have a secondary 1D range tree based on the y coordinate for all the points. So, for all the points over here, over here all the points we have a another tree which is based on the y coordinate. So, that is the secondary 1D range search tree. Okay. So, once we report these points then we will do the again range search on this based on that y coordinate and we will get all the points over here. So, that how we will see. So, these are these are the all the so these are the points in first for 1D uh, pi, primary 1D x, x coordinate and these are the corresponding tree in the uh, in the y coordinate uh, with respect to the y coordinate. Then we will do the search over here in the with respect to the y 1 y 2. And whatever we will do the search again we will start from the root, we will go to there and we will reach to a split node once we reach to a split node like this. So, it will report all the points over here which are in this range. Okay. So, this is the idea. So, lots of data structure is going on over here. So, we have this is the primary trees, uh, primary sub trees which are outputting. Now, on this point we know there are similar trees over there 
based on the because this is same size similar trees over there based on the y coordinate uh, range search tree. Now, in that sub tree we do the range search based on y 1 y 2. So, that will slowly uh, go and and there we will we'll get the all the points which are in the range of y 1 y 2 also. So, that point we are going to report it. So, that is the idea and this idea can be extended for higher dimension. So, what is the time complexity? Time complexity will be square of it because we are doing two times of this uh, range search query and this is the this is the, uh, the query time is this and if we have to report all the points k plus log n square and p processing time is same and this is the for 2D and for higher dimensional we have this figure each node. I mean we have uh, uh, for 3D we have x, y, z. So, for d dimensional this is the general form. Okay. So, the next topic we will discuss dynamic programming problem or DP. Okay. So, uh, what is the dynamic programming technique or uh, DP technique? It is uh, similar to we know we have seen uh, a te design technique which is called divide and conquer technique. It is a uh, algorithmic technique. So, uh, we will we'll explain this DP with an example with an problem that problem is called longest common subsequence problem. So, what is the problem? Problem is we have given two sequence x sequence and y sequence x is of length m and y is of length n. We have to find the longest common subsequence to both of them. So, that is the problem. So, for example, uh, a longest common or the depending on how many longest common subsequence we will see that. So, for example, suppose we have two sequence x and y, x is uh, this a, com a, b, c, d, uh, a, b, c, b, d, a, b and y is b, d, c, a, b, a. Now, we have to find the uh, common longest common subsequence. So, for example, uh, uh, do you have a subsequence uh, b, b, uh, b b is a subsequence, but that is of length 2. Now, can you have a subsequence of length 3 b c b. So, b c b. So, now question is can you have a subsequence of length 4? Yes. So, b c b a. So, b c b a is a subsequence of length 4. Can you have a subsequence of length 5? So, you can check we do not have a subsequence of length 5 which is a common subsequence for both of them. So, the length of the longest common subsequence is 4. So, we can the so this is uh, this is B C B C B A B C B A is one such subsequence. So, this is a we can say longest common subsequence this is a so there are other subsequence also like uh, B uh, uh, B B D uh, B B A P that is also a uh, subsequence of length 4. So, this is a set basically. So, uh, this is a longest common subsequence. So, we need to find a longest common subsequence of this uh, given two sequence. So, that is the problem that is the problem of uh, uh, what is called LCS. Now, how to solve this problem? Now, we can so we have given two subsequence uh, two sequence. So, we can take a subsequence from here and we can check whether that is a subsequence of this sequence. So, given any subsequence if we take from here this is a set of length m. So, how many subsequence will be there? Uh, it is a basically the all possible subset. So, 2 to the power m. So, you take a subsequence we take a subsequence then how to check that is a common that is that is also a subsequence here that will take order of uh, n because that we need to uh, get that first uh, uh, first alphabet here then the end alphabet. So, that checking for every subsequence of this we can check that is a, that is also a subsequence of this will take order of n and how many subsequence are there? There are 2 to the power m subsequence are there. So, for each subsequence we need to do order of n. So, it is a uh, order of n into 2 to the power m. So, that is exponential time algorithm, but we want to do it in uh, order of n m into n. So, that is the 
uh, that is the one we want to do it and for that we are going to uh, use the what is called a new technique which is called dynamic programming technique or DP. Okay. So, to discuss that technique let us simplify this problem. Uh, we are looking for longest common subsequence and we have seen there are, uh, there, there could be many longest common subsequence of a uh, two sequence. Now, if we look at the length of the longest common subsequence for our example length is 4 and this length is unique. So, we can uh, first convert this problem, we can simplify this problem instead of finding for longest common subsequence, first we find the length of the longest common subsequence and then we can extend that algorithm to find the find a longest common subsequence. So, first we find the length of the longest common subsequence, uh, the, the length of a longest common subsequence and the length is unique. Then from once we get the length, then from there we can try to get the uh, get a longest common subsequence that is the idea. So, that is the simplification we are doing. So, let us uh, denote the length of a subsequence at this mod operations, I mean this is the not mod, this is the length of a uh, sequence S or length of a subsequence S, this is just, just a notation. Okay. Now, we will use another notation C i j, this is basically for all, all i and j, it is basically length of the longest common subsequence of x sequence which is, which is from 1 to i and y sequence which is from 1 to j. <coughs> so, uh, we have two sequence x and y. So, we have this uh, say x sequence, this is our x sequence and we have say y sequence over here, one is of length m. Now, we take x sequence up to i okay. and y sequence up to say j th index. So, the whole whole sequence is 1 to x is 1 to 1 to I think x is 1 to m just uh, yeah x is 1 to m. So, this is x sequence which is 1 to m and y sequence is 1 to n, this is x sequence and this is y sequence. Now, we take a x sequence uh, sub, sub, sub sequence up to i and y is up to uh, j. So, we consider x is up to 1 to i, y is up to 1 to j and if we consider this is a sub, sub sequence. So, uh, prefix you can say prefix up to i, prefix up to j for y. Now, we denote the C i j as the length of the longest common subsequence while we are considering the x prefix up to i and y prefix up to j. Now, if we can find and this is this is for all i and j, i is running from 1 to m and j is running from 1 to m. So, if we can find the C i j for all i and j, then uh, we, we can get C m n which is the uh, which is the longest common subsequence of x up to m that is the whole sequence and y up to n that is the whole that is what we are looking for. We are looking basically C m m, but we want to take this as prefixes so that we can have a theorem and that theorem will give us a uh, dynamic programming uh, code. Okay. So, this is the theorem which is the which will give us a recursive algorithm for finding C i j's. So, this theorem is telling uh, C i j is equal to C i minus 1 comma j minus 1 plus 1 if i and j are uh, x i equal to y j. If these two alphabet are same, then we have this formula. Otherwise, if they are different, then we have maximum of C i minus 1 comma j. So, one index is uh, less for each and here both the uh, index is less. So, that is the theorem we need to prove this theorem. So, if we uh, can prove this theorem, this theorem will give us a, so this theorem will give us a algorithm to find the C i j. Okay. Now, how to prove this theorem? Now, let us consider the first case, 
say second case will be similar. So, we are going to prove the first case only here in this lecture. So, let us consider first case. So, this x i and y j suppose they are same these two value. Now, suppose we denote z 1 to n is one longest common subsequence of x up to i and y up to j up to here and here. So, and c i j uh, c i j is basically uh, k that is the uh, size of this sequence which is the k ok c i j is k and we are taking one longest common subsequence at z 1 to k where c i j is k length of the longest common subsequence is k say. Now, we are claiming that this last z k. So, the sequence is subse longest common subsequence is z 1 z 2 z k. So, the last z k is this common value x i and y j. Okay. If not otherwise we have to prove this by contradiction. Otherwise we can extend this z could be extended. Okay. Now, uh, how, how to show that? Now, first we are going to prove that this z z uh, z i to i minus 1 is c i and sorry this uh, 1 to i minus. So, c of 1 to this will be 1 to ok there is a. So, this is 1 to. So, z 1 to k minus 1 is the longest common subsequence of uh, 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 this two x 1 to i minus 1 that means up to here and y 1 uh, 1 to j minus 1 up to here. Okay. So, this we are going to show this. Now, the claim is this is a longest common subsequence of this thing. So, how to show this? This is the longest common subsequence. Suppose, this is not a longest common subsequence of this uh, x sequence up to i minus 1, y sequence up to uh, j minus 1. Then we have a subsequence which is more than length this. So, that is of length k say. So, that is say w. So, w is of length k say. Now, if w is of k or more than k, if w is of length more than k, I mean more than less greater than equal to strictly greater than equal to k minus 1. So, that, that means w will be length uh, k or k plus 1. So, if the w is k say length, now we take uh, z z k which is the uh, last element of the uh, z and this is a this this is a uh, uh, this is a common sequence of x and y whose length is more than k plus this is from length k plus 1 because more than k plus 1 actually more equal to k plus 1. So, that means this is a contradiction that the length of the long c i j was k. So, that is the contradiction that means this is a this z 1 to k minus 1 is a longest common subsequence of x 1 to i minus 1 y 1 to j minus 1. So, uh, and thus so what is the size of this size of this is k minus 1. So, that, that means length of the longest common subsequence of x up to i minus 1 and y up to j minus 1 is basically k minus 1. So, that, that means c of i minus 1 comma j minus 1 is k minus 1. So, which is nothing but so c i j is this is k minus 1 plus 1 which is k. So, that is the first part of the proof that c i j is equal to this. Now, the second part of the second part is similar you can easily uh, I, I leave this as a exercise to you. So, you can prove that. Okay. Now, how we can use this for theorem for uh, having a algorithm. So, this theorem is telling. So, this theorem is telling uh, just a minute let us go back to the theorem. So, this theorem is telling c i g is equal to c i minus 1 comma j minus 1 plus 1 if x i is equal to y j or it is the maximum between these two. Now, this will give us algorithm before that there is a uh, indication that ok. So, this is you see if we have a solution this x z is a z from 1 to k is a longest common subsequence of x up to i and y up to j and then this uh, z 1 to k minus 1 is a then longest common subsequence of uh, 1 to i minus 1 comma 1 to j minus 1. So, this is a 
this so the uh, thing is an optimal solution the z optimal solution of a problem or problem instant contain the optimal solution of the sub problems. So, from z we can get the uh, all the because this z then any prefix of z is a longest common subsequence of x and a prefix of y. So, this is a first hallmark, hallmark of dynamic programming problem. So, if our given uh, that uh, dynamic programming technique. So, if you are if we can reach to this hallmark then we can think of ok now we can apply for a dynamic programming technique. So, there is second hallmark also we will see that slowly ok. Now, let, let us have the algorithm based on that uh, theorem. So, we want to find the longest common subsequence of two sequence x y with the prefix i and j. Now, we are using the formula if x i equal to y j then c i j is nothing but uh, the length of the longest common subsequence of x comma y. So, this is c i minus 1 comma uh, 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 j minus 1 plus 1. Otherwise, it is the maximum just the theorem we are just doing. Okay. Now, what is the worst case? Worst case is this one when they are not equal because if they are equal we have only one call of lesser size both are uh, i minus 1 j minus 1. But if they are not equal, then we have two calls of this uh, C i j, I mean C uh, longest length of this is length of the longest common subsequence with uh, only one index is less, this index is remain same. So, this is the worst case scenario when x i is not equal to y j. So, that is the worst case scenario for this algorithm. So, now we will have a, uh, a worst case tree we will draw for two value say m is equal to 3 if you have a uh, sequence of length m and uh, we have a y sequence of length 4. Then suppose we are doing worst case. So, we have to we want to find c uh, 3 4. Now, for that we need to find worst case means they are not equal. So, that uh, we have to find uh, c i my this is i this is j say. Now, one is i minus 1 and j will be remain same. So, maximum between these two and this is one and another one is. Uh, so, this is one then another one this this we have to compute maximum between these two. So, i will be same j will be j minus 1. So, 3 3. So, this is 2 4. So, we have to take we have to compute this compute this then we have to take the maximum. Then again to compute this again we have to we are in worst case. So, this will be uh, 1 1 uh, i minus 1 is 1 4 and this will be 2 3 again we do like this we continue like this. So, this is the uh, recursive tree. So, what is the uh, height of this tree? Height of this tree is m plus n, but although we are doing lot of works uh, repeatedly because this is 2 3 c 2 3 if we have calculated this again we are calculating in this branch. So, that is our uh, that is our we are solving the sub problem which is already solved. So, that we want to avoid we want to memorize it. So, now we are going to discuss uh, memorization version of this recursive algorithm which I have discussed and this is the second hallmark or final hallmark for dynamic programming technique where we have a recursive solution of the so overlapping sub problems. We have seen in the tree we have many sub problems are overlapping once we calculate a c like this one c 2 3 here also we have we are we are we need to calculate c truth. So, these are overlaps many sub problems are overlapping. So, this is the hallmark overlapping sub problem a recursive solution contain a small number of distinct sub problem repeated many times. So, if you see in this uh, uh, algorithm in the recursion then we will be uh, we will be ready for the dp. So, that is the final hallmark for dp. So, here so, uh, and uh, so the number of distinct uh, 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 sub problems for two strings of length m and n should be only m into n. So, that we want to uh, see that by memorizing the uh, sub problem which is already calculated. So, that we are going to do in this memorization algorithm. This is called memorization. So, after computing a solution to a sub problem, we store into the table. And in the subsequent call, we will use that value, we will not re, uh, to avoid the redoing the work. So, that is to uh, avoid the uh, 
uh, again calculating this values. So, that we are going to do here. So, this is the modified version here only thing we will check we will once we calculated some C i j we will store it into the table. So, that when next time we will we are going to calculate some C i j we will check whether this is already calculated or not. If it is calc if it is done then we will we will not uh, we will avoid the redoing the work basically. Okay. So, let us uh, discuss this LCS of a length of the longest common subsequence of x y to sequence up to prefix i up to prefix j. Now, we uh, initialize everything every c i is basically nil which is not calculated or which is uh, starting with 0 because if i is 0. So, that we will see in an example in a moment in a tabular way. Okay. Now, if this is the formula we have seen uh, if it is null means this is not calculated actually this is nil means it is not calculated then only we are going to calculate it and then only we are going to use the recursive formula recursive formula coming from that theorem if x i is equal to y j then c i j is basically coming from this formula otherwise it is uh, max of this two recursive this two recursive call and this we will only do if c i j is not in the table if c i j is nil. So, everything will initialize by nil and then we will uh, we'll take an example this is the. So, this part is same only here we have a extra checking which is the memoization or memorization that whether we have already calculated that value or not. So, that way we are saving the time I mean it is just uh, not exponential in the height of that uh, m plus n it is just order of m into n. So, it is just a basically m cross n treble or matrix and the space is also m into n. So, we will see that by uh, this example. So, this is our dynamic programming uh, algorithm and we are going to execute that algorithm on this two uh, x and y. So, we have a x over here a b c b d a b. So, this is our x sequence and this is our uh, y sequence and we are going to calculate the c i j for d, uh, for i and j. Now, this is basically uh, these are zeros because this is uh, what is the c, c this this matrix are basically c i j's. Now, i is starting from this is for i is equal to 0 that means, this sequence is uh, there is no y over here y sequence only x sequence is there. Uh, so, just a minute I need to check whether x is which one is x. So, x is basically our given x and y. So, x is our up to a, a b. Let me go back. So, uh, yeah, so this is our x sequence. So, we can just write to. So, this is our x sequence over here, and this is our y sequence down over here. Okay. So, now this is C i j s. So, uh, this is uh, C C uh, this is C 0 0. So, 0 0 means this should be 0. Now, this is C 1 0. So, x is 1 y is 0. So, length will be 0 because y sequence is not there. So, this is c 2 0. So, x is 2 a b I mean the prefix we are talking about, but y is 0. So, that will be length. So, this part whole is 0 and this is this one is c 0 1. So, c 0 1 is this one this will be 0 because y x is not x is not there only y sequence is there and this one is c uh, c 0 2. So, that will be also 0 because x is 0. So, this way all these fields are 0. Now, we are going to calculate this one. This one is C 1 1. So, C 1 1 is basically coming from the formula. Uh, so, these two. So, these two are not equal. So, then it will be maximum of these two. So, maximum of these two is 0. Now, we will calculate this one. C this is basically C uh, 2 1 C 2 1. C 2 1 is basically this one. Now, for that we check whether these two are same or not. This is basically uh, x i and y j basically. So, these two 
we check this two are equal. So, we will use the formula C i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1. So, that is this one plus 1. So, this will be uh, 1. So, this plus 1 is 1. Now, again we calculate this one. So, for this we compare these two. These two are different. So, this is maximum of these two. So, this will be 1. Now, we calculate this one. This is C 4 1. So, C 4 1. So, A 4 and B 1 we calculate uh, B 1 we check these two are same. So, the first formula. So, C i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1 that is basically this one. So, this plus 1. So, this will be 1. Again come here these two we compare these two are different. So, this will be maximum of these two. So, this is 1. So, similarly we continue like this. This will be when there is a match we will put a uh, arrow over here. So, why you are doing that we will see that. We want to get back the sequence. This will give us a length at the end. At the end here C m m this will give us a length, but how to get the sequence uh, that will be by that this arrow will help us for that. Okay, let us continue with this again we can take this we compare uh, these two these two are not same. So, this is maximum of these two now this one these two are not same. So, this will be maximum of these two 1. So, like this we continue. So, here we have a d over here. So, these two are so same. So, it will be c i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1. So, this will be 2. So, this is 2. Again these two are not same maximum of these two. So, it will be 2 then again 2. So, this way we continue we continue like this. So, here in, uh, we continue like this. Okay. Now, here again same thing, same thing. Now, come here this field, this is C uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, C 6, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, C 6, 4. So, for this we need to these two are same. So, it is basically the first formula C i minus 1 j minus 1 this one plus 1. So, it will be 3. So, 3 then it will be these two are different. So, maximum of these two. So, 3 will be here. So, similarly we can fill this table like this. Yeah. So, here here. So, these two are same B B. So, this will be this plus 1. So, this 4 we got over here. Now, again we do the same thing for this row continue and here uh, we have a a. So, yeah here these two are same. So, we have a a. So, we this plus 1. So, 4 will come again and then these two are different maximum of this 4. So, this is our C m n. So, this is our result. This is our uh, output. So, C m n we are looking for. So, this is the uh, this is this is what is called dynamic uh, programming. We are this is a tabular method bottom up method we are just uh, memorizing the value which we have already calculated to avoid the recalculating. So, now this will take order of m n time because this matrix size is m cross n m into n. Okay. So, now how to get the longest common subsequence? We got the length of the longest common subsequence that is 4. Now, from here how we can get the longest common subsequence? So, for that we have to follow the this uh, this arrow I mean this line. So, that will give us a longest common subsequence. So, this is this a a is matching. Now, we are here. So, now we can follow either any any, any of this line in this row. So, we are following this. So, this is uh, matching with B. So, A, A, B. So, this way we are doing. Then this is like this we are following like this. So, this is the B, C, B, A, B, C, B, A. So, this if we follow this arrow it will give a long. If we follow different arrow then it will give us a different another another longest common subsequence of length 4. So, this is the algorithm and the time complexity of this algorithm is order of m into n and the space is also 
uh, order of m into m. Okay. So, now uh, let us conclude the talk. In this lecture, we have discussed uh, two topics. First one is computational geometry. So, it is a neat field for uh, geometric uh, algorithm, geometric problems. There we have discussed one problem like uh, range search, uh, orthogonal range search. Then we discuss one new data structure which is a range search tree. And then we have uh, discussed the second topic which is called dynamic programming or DP which is a, a design technique uh, which will be useful for many algorithms. So, we will see this will be useful for graph algorithm uh, in couple of le next lectures. So, there we will see how we can use this technique for uh, in a graph, graph algorithm. So, next topic we will start the uh, graph algorithm. Thank you.